pumpkin pies are being severely underutilized in Minecraft. When last time did you eat pumpkin pie? Do you remember? It's an okay food. It restores a lot of hunger. Saturation? Maybe not so much. The biggest problem with pumpkin pies is probably its recipe. It needs three ingredients to craft, so people naturally choose more simple options. But what if I tell you that building pumpkin pie factory is one of the best things you can do? I hope I will be able to convince you by the end of this video. I hope you enjoy. So I built this Halloween island in the previous episode with giant pumpkin and spooky tree. However, this island is completely empty inside and I don't like my builds to be completely empty. At first I thought to build pumpkin factory inside the pumpkin, but then I have so much more space inside the tree also underground. And then I realized, pumpkin pie factory? Yes, I also almost never eat pumpkin pies and I forgot about their existence. So in order to produce pumpkin pies, I need three main ingredients, sugar, eggs and pumpkins. So technically I need to build three farms. And the first one is sugar farm, or to be more precise, sugar cane farm. I already built sugar cane farm in the past, however, it was not productive not productive at all. So I didn't want to build the same design, so I went with better one. So this sugarcane farm is based on flying machine. And it's actually quite simple. So I started from building the collection system. The farm will be 16 blocks wide, that's the size of the flying machine. Lengthwise it will be 23 blocks long. First line will be made of redstone with powered rails on top. Then 10 lines of solid blocks with rails on top. Then again another line with redstone with powered rails on top. Another 10 blocks of solid blocks and at the end a line of hoppers. So I've placed all of the rails and you can see how the collection system looks like. By the way put solid block here, not glass, trust me. Redstone, 10 blocks, redstone, 10 blocks and then collection system. All of these hoppers are feeding in the dropper. You can see why I did that later, but if you do this farm in your world, you can just place double chest or actually multiple double chests. This farm is so productive. Or better, shulker loader. But if you want to see why I chose dropper, wait until the end of the video. Now I will surround my farm in glass. It's future me speaking and I actually did a mistake. There should be a solid block next to a powered rail. Don't repeat my mistakes, put solid block there. Everything else can be glass. It's completely fine. You build, you learn. Now I can build the next layer. Sugarcane can grow on sand, dirt or moss. So I really prefer to use moss for this farm, because I prefer this color. Also, sugarcane should be connected to water to grow. In order to keep my water contained, I use waterlogged leaves. I think it also looks nice like that. The best configuration is the one that you can see on the screen. And make sure that every single leaf is waterlogged. Of course you can place water just like that without leaves. It will stay in place. But I kind of prefer it this way. You can also use slabs or stairs. Really, it's up to you. Two middle rows will not have sugarcane growing on it, because it will be in the path of flying machine. So I think I will put extra light, because it's kind of dark here. After all, it's underground. I don't want anybody to spawn. And the flying machine is very simple. You have the switch powering up the repeater. It's looking into the furnace. There is another repeater on top of the furnace with maximum delay. Torch under one of the furnaces. An observer looking outside. And the flying machine part consists of two observers and two pistons. And of course slime blocks and glass at the end of the line. And on the other side of the machine the system is exactly the same. It's really simple and the materials are minimal. The only problem with this flying machine is that if you unload it, for example if you leave the area and it's in the middle of flying, it will stop. So make sure never leave this flying machine working out of your render distance. Always stop it if you leave the area. As you can see it's a very simple system and on this side it can be activated all the time. The only on off switch that you need will be over there. As I said before, I already had a sugarcane farm, but as you see, it's not productive at all. So that was exactly my point about making a pumpkin pie factory, because apart from pumpkin pies, the outcome of each individual factory or each individual farm 
are so useful and sugarcane is the most useful. Currently I'm struggling a little bit with rockets. I never have enough paper. Also, I don't even have enough sugarcane to fill up this farm. I will need to wait until sugarcane grows in order to fill this farm with sugarcane. Oh look, it's already growing. How nice. By the way, I completely forgot I also need to put some water over here if I want to put sugarcane on every single block. I want this farm to be as productive as possible. So after planting all of the sugarcane, I need to figure out the collection. So I need to put all of the solid blocks in the end of the farm, so minecarts will not fall off. Also I need to power them up, and I will hook the redstone to the same on-off switch as the flying machine. And actually this on-off switch that you see right here is actually gonna be hooked up to different place. I don't want to go underground every time I want to run this factory. This farm is located in the ground part of my island, under the floor. So I will make a line that will connect it to the pumpkin. Yes, the pumpkin will be my main office, but I'm jumping ahead. So if you see if I power up this one lever, it will activate the flying machine and will also activate the rails. Now I need to make hopper minecarts. Remember I told you never place glass in the end of the line. I had a small problem with it and now I replaced it with solid block. And look, it works perfectly. The flying machine, the collection system. Now I only need to wait until I have enough sugar cane to fill out the farm. By the way, there is a reason why I built my farm underground. You can actually see it through the floor inside the pumpkin. I will replace this grass with glass so I can always see the growth of sugarcane and the flying machine. And I think it looks really nice. And it adds more movement to my pumpkin pie factory. So I couldn't resist and I made heart shaped floor. I used green glass for the center and orange glass for the outline. What do you think about it? So now inside the pumpkin. I will build two pumpkin farms on the two sides of the walls, you know, for double production. And the design is very, very simple. You have a line of observers and pistons lined up just like that. There is a light source under the observer, and they will observe the block where the pumpkin grows. Also you will need to place a water under the pistons. You don't need to put it in every single block. Every second would be fine as well. It just should be maximum 4 blocks from the pumpkin. I mean pumpkin stem. To hook the observer to piston you just place redstone, just like that, behind the piston. Don't forget the solid block behind the observer. And then just place the seed in front of the observer. Whenever pumpkin will grow, the stem state will change. Observer will detect it and activate all the nearby pistons. It will push out the pumpkin that grew into our collection stream. I will show it to you in a minute. Obviously you plant the pumpkin on the farmland, but the other block should be either dirt, grass or as in my case moss. I just like that moss is green. And what's the best about this farm is that it's tileable. You can build it as tall as you want to. So in order to build second and following layers, you just easily repeat the process. Light block on top of the observer, dirt in front or iteration of dirt and moss. Solid blocks behind, some water buckets, observers and pistons. Plant your pumpkins in front of the observers and redstone behind the pistons. Now it's time to build the collection system for my pumpkin farm and it's extremely easy. All it needs is just water flow right in front of the first line of farm. 
I will help the farm a little bit with this bone meal, so it can start producing more pumpkins much faster. So I will encase this farm with glass, because piston will push out the pumpkins very hard. I have to make sure they don't jump out. In the center I will place couple of hoppers that are feeding into one chest. Actually even one hopper would be enough. Three is also good number. It depends on your resources. I placed five. Maybe eventually I will change it. Now that the collection system is ready, I will repeat this process until the ceiling And while I was building pumpkin farm, look, my sugarcane farm produced enough sugarcane to finally plant every single block, so now farm can work at full production. I'm so excited! One side is ready, another one to go. I added white concrete as walls. These spaces becoming way too orange. And hey, while I was working on this farm, it already started producing pumpkins. And it hasn't been that long yet. I'm so excited! Also, to add a little bit more decoration. I think this place needs a little bit of structure. Wooden beams, made out of spruce logs, are perfect for this. You know, I really like frog lights. They are such good blocks, it's very easy to farm. Check out my episode about frogs. I use them all the time in my redstone and in my farms. I like to have plenty of light, so nothing bad spawns and explodes my farm. Hey, what do you think about it? Pretty neat, isn't it? I'm a little bit annoyed about the chest, it's a little bit off center. I think I will change how it looks, but, but for now. The farm is pretty much done. It has six lines and six pumpkins in each line. By the way, this farm is a little bit dangerous. Sometimes pumpkin can stuck and don't fall down. It's not a huge problem, I actually have solution for it. Also, I was very annoyed with the chest of center. So now I changed my collection system. Now it has only three hoppers that are feeding into double chest. Just like that. It just looks a little bit better. There was nothing wrong with the previous system. Anyway, let's mirror the farm and build it on this wall. building I wasn't running the sugarcane farm, mainly because it was a little bit loud. But now that I see that all sugarcane has grew, let's run it and see how much can we get from all of this. Oh, it's so satisfactory. You know, I'm not very good with redstone, I'm still learning a lot. But seeing things work, it's just extremely rewarding. Hey, not so bad, and it's still coming. Unfortunately, this will be limited by a hopper speed. It's okay, don't worry. For this size it's not so bad. If you will make this farm much much bigger, consider bigger collection system. Hello sir, how did you get here? It's a floating island in the middle of the air. I don't know if llamas could fly. And would you look at that. Now it's ready. Hey, you see it works. So now I have two out of three farms for my pumpkin pie factory. And you can see how that pumpkin got stuck. That's a bit unfortunate. But I have an idea for that. You'll see later. Well, it got resolved right now. <laughs> it's alright. So there are two more things left to do. And no, I didn't count wrong. I built two farms out of three. But there is one bonus thing that I'm ready to share with you. But before we go to bonus thing, time to produce some eggs. And producing eggs from chicken is extremely simple. You can literally put 24 chickens in a hole, put hopper underneath and collect their eggs. I wouldn't even call that a farm. But eventually they will produce so many eggs, all the systems will be overflown. So I made a farm that will collect chicken eggs. And when there will be too many chicken eggs, it will produce cooked chicken meat and feathers. So it's like three in one farm. My favorite types of farms. 
So the chicken on the right will produce eggs. So I have one hopper feeding into the double chest and one hopper feeding into the dispenser. Chicken will hatch the egg and the way the hoppers work that at first items prefer to go down. So first all the eggs will go to the double chest. When the double chest will be full, all the eggs will go to the dispenser that will plop the eggs into this hopper on the left and there will be a cauldron with lava inside of it. Baby chickens will be fine. They will sit inside the hopper and they will not touch lava. But when the chickens will grow, they will get fire damage. So they will cook and produce cooked chicken meat and feathers. And feathers are quite useful for quite few things. You can trade them with Fletchers. You can eat chicken meat. No, you should eat pumpkin pie. Forget about chicken meat. You can also use feathers for fireworks. Last time I made fireworks show, I didn't have enough feathers. Or when I needed to craft a brush for archaeology. And also it's very useful to have plenty of chicken eggs for future. Top of the cauldrons should be covered with carpets. I used moss carpet. This is to make sure that no chicken will escape. Otherwise they will pop out somehow. Especially from the right one. The other part of the system is to make this dispenser work. And it's super easy. You just make one observer look into another observer. They will trigger itself all the time. And this will trigger a dispenser to produce chickens. However, I don't want this farm to work all the time. So I will make small on-off switch using sticky piston. So whenever system is off, the observers will not trick each other. Anyway, it will take time before this double chest will be filled with eggs. And by the way, have you noticed there are no chickens in the system right now? It's very easy to correct. You just place another dispenser just like that, fill it up with eggs, and then use lever to produce a lot of chickens. Ideally, 24. Now that I'm waiting for chickens to produce more eggs, to have enough chickens in the system, I can hook this redstone on-off switch to the sugarcane farm. It's quite easy, just some redstone and repeaters. Now I just need to hide this line, and it's easy to do with moss carpets. It's not the most elegant solution, maybe you know some better solution for it, I don't know. But I'm okay with this. If it works, it ain't stupid. And no one can see it, anyway. And now that I hooked this system, I can finally show you why I needed a dropper here. So basically I'm just repeating the system that I have in my guardian farm. Whenever any item will go inside the dropper, it will spit it out into this glass column. The items will glitch through the glass and on top there will be a water stream. That water stream will go inside the pumpkin. So I can access the collection system from inside the pumpkin without the need to go down. This pipe will be inside the tree. So it's not gonna be very visible. It's a very simple solution, but it will add more factory feel to this. Maybe later I can decorate it to look more like pipes. For now I use glass. Probably because I want to see visually how the farm is running. So the system is quite simple. As I said, I will just copy it from my guardian farm. If I will survive it. Not ready to be attacked. Not at all. And poisoned. Gosh. So you only need comparator, few redstone, repeater, and a target block. So now you can see all the system in action. It looks... Don't you just like to observe how items move in Minecraft? They're just so exciting. And it flows into these hoppers that collect all the items and go into these chests. So now I don't need to go underground. I can start my sugarcane farm from inside the pumpkin and also collect all the sugarcane inside the pumpkin as well. It's gonna be hidden here on the side and there is a reason I wanted it to go this way. As you noticed, inside the pumpkin I built the builds on three walls. And I still have one big wall, empty. And I had the idea. Initially I wanted to make output of all farms into one place. And that one place would be a honey wall that would dispense all the items. 
and then collect it in one system. So yes, I'm building honey wall dispenser. I'm starting it from building on and off switch. Again, this farm will be triggered by observers looking into each other. And I use sticky piston to trigger it into on or off position. I don't want this farm working all the time, only when I'm there. In your world, you can make this wall three blocks wide. For me, I want to make it much wider, because I want to occupy the whole space over here. So first of all, what I need to create is a bubble column. For that, I need a soul sand. So if my wall is 9 blocks wide, I need 9 soul sands. Place just like that. Then I need to place a droppers looking into the soul sand. I mean into water stream on top of soul sand. You don't really need to place these droppers on the outer sides of the farms because droppers have variation and they can kind of shoot to the side. So for 9 soul sand I only need 7 hop droppers. Then I need hoppers feeding into these droppers. And another line of hoppers placed just like that. Now I need to build a honey wall on top of these hoppers. The ones that are going di directly into the droppers. On the top I need to leave one block gap, because there will be water bubble column on one side, it will speed the items into the water stream. And also there will be another opposing water stream going the opposite direction. This will ensure that all the items will end up on this honey block on this side. So now I have to place some temporary blocks over here. For now it will be three blocks wide. I need to place a signs. I will place them against the honey block. And now I will create water sources over here. And another line of signs right on top of it. So it will stop any water flowing there. And we need to create bubble column from the other side of the honey block. In order to create bubble column, you need to place kelp just like that and just bone mill it. I think it's the simplest way to do it. This way you will ensure that every single block is the source block, so no items will stuck in the water and flow up immediately. And now in order to activate the farm, I need to hook these observers to dispensers. And in order to do that, I will need target blocks and redstone. So let's see how it works um, like this. So if I flip this lever, all the dispensers will be activated and nothing happens. It's because dispensers, they are completely empty. I need to fill it up with some items. Luckily, I already have some pumpkins and plenty of sugar cane. Would you look at that? It looks so nice. I have never built this before, but now I'm considering to building honey wall everywhere in my base. It looks so cool to display your items like this. So my first idea for this farm, I mean factory, was to hook up all the farms into this one place and then go into the collection system. Right now I'm playing in 1.20.1. And I just found out that in new update there will be new block, auto crafter. Hey, I never got this achievement before. That's new. That's cool. So with new auto crafter, it will be possible to craft pumpkin pies and all the other stuff automatically. But when I built this farm, I didn't know about it. So I don't have enough space to implement it. Or maybe I will need to be very, very creative. For now, collection systems are not together because the farms are too productive and I want to keep them separately. Otherwise, they will completely overflow my system very, very fast. For the last part, I decided to decorate my factory a little bit more. I made a ceiling out of the warp wood and added warp wood trapdoors. Mostly because for the color, everything was so red and orange. And green and cyan are very good complementary colors to it. Or opposite, whatever the color theory is. I just like how it looks together. So I was trying to convince you to build pumpkin pie factory. You know, even if you don't end up eating pumpkin pies and prefer different food, the outcome from this factory is very very good. I have so much sugar cane, 
Finally, I don't have to worry about the rockets. As for pumpkins, I'm gonna trade them. Yes, you heard me right. I brought two farmer villagers here. So far they haven't been zombified, so they will trade these pumpkins for one emerald. But after just one zombification, they will be willing me to trade one pumpkin for one emerald. Pretty good deal. Also, ironically, they sell pumpkin pies. So I don't even need to craft them actually. <laughs> or you can buy golden carrots, whatever you prefer. So what do you think about my today's build? I built three very productive farms. I'm quite proud of everything that I've done today. Last episode and this episode were full with a lot of creative stuff. By the way, I promise that this island will be available for download if you put plenty of likes and comments. Now you have double chance I can make this island be available for download together with farms. The conditions are the same as previous videos. Put likes and comments under this video. And if I see that you really, really want this island for download, I will make it available on the Planet Minecraft account. Most probably as a late Matica file. So comment down below if you want this available for download. And of course, like this video. It costs you literally nothing, but it means the world for me. And when I AFK in this pumpkin, I'm actually IFK in for four different farms. A guardian farm on the bottom in the ocean that I built long, long time ago. Sugarcane farm, pumpkin farm, and also chicken farm. I really like combining multiple things in Minecraft. So having multiple farms in one place is ideal for me. This floating island is so big I could probably fit something else. But I will stop for now. Let me know what do you think. Don't forget to subscribe. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Drop comments with any suggestions that you may have. So until the next time, bye!